Hello everyone, this is City Politics by Janagraha. I am Harshraj Gatti. As the number of COVID cases across the country are rising, as the second wave of COVID-19 is acknowledged both at the state and the national level, the stakeholders are trying to get as much as help as possible to ensure that the COVID management is carried out in a swift and efficient manner. As we already know, a good number of uh, volunteers are involved day in and day out, identifying hospitals, identifying beds, okay, seeking donors. We at Janagraha are looking at the manner in which the volunteer or the self-help groups are contributing their due share into COVID-19 management. Over a period of week of discussion, we were able to engage with the different volunteer groups who primarily said that as much as they are very much involved in the COVID mitigation, the only rule is that their entire mechanism or the ecosystem of voluntary effort is not streamlined. It is not formalized. There is no formal mechanism set up both by at the state level or at the national level to ensure that the voluntary services are used for the maximum benefit of the COVID-19 patients and for the society at large. So here is the take of few volunteers who are actively engaged in the voluntary work against COVID-19. Let's hear what they have to say. Yeah, I'm Padma Shri. I'm ward committee member from 174 ward HSR layer. So in our ward, basically what happened is during this COVID as it uh, the second wave, first wave what we have heard is it was a well-planned one. So we had the duties and every responsibilities divided among us to look into because none were aware of what it was according to what we have observed. The basic thing is elderly who are going breathlessness and uh, they are uh, having a lot of tiredness which requires immediate oxygen is what we first saw. So what we did was we first monitored the situation and it, this was the need of the hour. So we just first put a request through the WhatsApp in all our WhatsApp saying that we require volunteers. So we made our own groups and uh, we are doing whatever we can. But uh, the, compared to last year uh, when Mr. Manivanan was there, he, uh, he asked uh, citizens to come forward and volunteer. So we had a wonderful team here. Uh, the volunteers were actually interacting with the BBMP, getting the day-to-day -day data and uh, then uh, we were uh, dis uh, distributing food, we were just, uh, collecting data on the ground. So many things we were doing, but this time that is missing. So I don't understand why uh, this is not happening this time. Even the isolation centers are not done this time. So the COVID, COVID cases are increasing and uh, the high priority now is to reduce the burden on hospitals. We need to have isolation centers and um, uh, definitely ward committees can uh, play a great role there. And volunteers from the ward level, volunteers can also play a great role. So I don't understand why suddenly that's, that is broken this time. Now, whatever we are doing is, uh, is by ourselves. Like we want to involve, we want to do something, we want to contribute. That is how it's going on. But uh, I don't think there is any official uh, uh, WC group working on this pandemic uh, work. In the backdrop of the pandemic, uh, across Bangalore, you know, various voluntary services are being uh, called in. We already have a ward committee. Why not use that? Uh, they are they, they are already networked. They know the localities. Uh, do you think ward committees will have any role in terms of communication and coordination uh, over this uh, pandemic? So definitely, the BBMP can leverage ward committees to do that. Uh, I feel the reason for not utilizing is one is the selection of the ward committee itself. Uh, most of the ward committee members are politically connected. Uh, there is uh, uh, no decision making happening. So somebody else is making decisions and then it is just ratified in the meeting. People from all uh, you know sectors, all the background uh, can, if they join the ward committees, then you know the energy is somewhere else. Involving uh, ward committee in COVID matters means knowing the area very well, the area of work very well and knowing the residents very well and knowing the medical facilities available in the ward very well and uh, one more thing is this would have helped uh, in, the, uh, in the awareness campaigns we could have gone about creating awareness amongst the people our own people, known people it would have been easier far more easier if the W 
uh, what committee was uh, involved and even they could have used the rwas and the uh, what committee members to be the watch and ward when the covid rules were broken if someone is new to the uh, our locality i will know like my block we have made block volunteers lane volunteers because every ward uh, committee member may not be uh, so familiar with the full ward uh, blocks so what we re- request is uh, all the residents welfare association who are well aware of the area their block uh, their lanes so because this is a common cause anyone can come over this is nothing but sitting at home and giving a genuine information rather than simply forwarding uh, unverified uh, one i i feel uh, i feel anybody who is interested to do something for their ward should be welcomed into the ward committee uh, there we can have a two three layers like you know one is the bigger core team and then there is a second layer of team which actually gives inputs to the core team and core team discusses and then you know uh, so we, there is no harm in having two three levels of ward committees so uh, the more diversified uh, the committees are actually more uh, fruitful so i suggest uh, we should help, welcome anybody who wants to do, contribute to this